What's up everybody, Jared here with CarBuzz.com and today I am bringing you a review of the 2023 Audi S8. L. The S8 is the sportier version of Audi's flagship sedan, the A8, which is the third big flagship German luxury saloon, along with the Mercedes-Benz S-Class and the BMW 7 Series. The A8 to me has always kind of been the odd one in the group. It's always been based on a quattro platform rather than a rear-wheel drive one, but as we've seen, the competitors are now making four-wheel drive standard, and there is a brand new new 7 Series out this year and a still new S-Class as well that just came out a year or two ago. So the A8 is now the oldest vehicle in this class. Audi gave the A8 and the S8 a facelift for the 2022 model year. So let's see whether or not those updates are enough to keep it relevant in this very niche and low volume, but very expensive category. So up front, we're going to see a very wide grille with a wider grille outside surround. We have some updated headlights that are a bit sharper than the last time we saw the A8 and S8. I think it looks great, but the design overall is a very subtle change from the 2021 model before that. This is a 2023 model. This color that we have was introduced for 2022. It's called Ultra Blue. I think it is the best color that you can get the S8 in. Tell me if you agree in the comments. It is absolutely stunning in this color. I would totally get it. And we have the black optic package. It's a $2,100 package. It's going to give us these black 21 inch wheels. You can see we have red brake calipers behind those as well. It's also going to black out all of our accents. So we have black Audi rings, black S8 badges, black mirror caps, just black all over the car. Not sure if that's my favorite element. Uh, I don't know if I would get that package, but I would certainly get the ultra blue. This is a very long car at about 209 inches long. You could only get the S8 and the A8 as long wheelbase models. They don't have a short wheelbase anymore. BMW and Mercedes are basically doing the same thing, at least in America, but you do have rear wheel steering as standard on the S8, optional on the A8 to make that long wheelbase just a little bit more manageable in parking lots. We've got this really cool connected taillight bar that does some really cool animations at night. It looks really awesome. And on the S8, we do have quad exhaust. And these are not the fake tips that Audi is known for doing. These are the real deal. So I'm very impressed with those. We still have our black S8 badge and our black four rings as well back here. And I mentioned that the taillights do some really cool stuff in terms of the animation, but the headlights are where it's really at. So you can get OLED headlights as standard, but we've got the optional matrix LED headlights. They look incredible at night and they can do some really cool things. So when you start up the car, it'll do this really cool dazzling animation on the wall or garage or whatever the headlights are pointed at. And you can actually change those to different animations when you get in in or out of the car. So you can have one animation when you come in, another when you come out. And these headlights also have some really cool abilities to carve out the, the high beams so that it doesn't blind oncoming uh, traffic. Now, the US has just recently changed its legislations there, but Audi says that these cars in America, which were defaulting to the old way where they had to have low beams on by default. There is a software fix that they can potentially do to make it to the European spec so that it can carve out the headlight beam from oncoming traffic, which is super cool. Despite their immense size, big executive saloons like this are not the best when it comes to trunk space because they usually have some kind of moving back seat or something that precludes you from being able to fold down those rear seats. The S8 has a good amount of storage, 12 and a half cubic feet. You can see the trunk is very deep in here. So just something to keep a note of if you're shopping for this car. All right, so now we're gonna check out the interior of the S8 and I can't wait to show you what happens when you open open the door in this car. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the door lever and watch what happens. The suspension is going to lift up really quickly. I hope you saw that because it is really cool. Let me see if I can get a wide angle of it going down. The suspension can lift up by about two inches. So you can see the suspension is now in its high mode. If I go ahead and lock the car, it should drop down. 
There we go, it goes down. So that is a really nice little feature that it does just to make it a little bit easier to get in and out of the S8 because obviously this is not an SUV. Super cool. I know a lot of other SUVs and uh, crossovers and sedans do that, but not as quickly as the S8 does it. And it has a lot more functionality than that that I'll talk about later in this video as we get the S8 out on the road. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. The start button is down here. I'm gonna go ahead and close the door. We do have a soft closed door, so I can just bring it to a close and it'll do the rest. So I'm not gonna to focus too much on the technology here. It's very similar to what you're gonna find in other Audis. You have a 10.1 inch upper screen and an 8.6 inch lower screen. That's pretty similar to what you're gonna get on other Audi models. I kind of wish that the A8 had like, and the S8 had like a bigger screen or something more special. It just feels like I'm in basically any other Audi right now, which it shouldn't feel that way because this is much more expensive. So watch my other Audi videos. I just did one on the SQ8 if you want to learn more about that. We do have a few interesting touches here. Uh, we've got our perforated S steering wheel, which is really nice. We've got our Audi uh, digital instrument cluster. I love these. Uh, they are really good to use. You can have the full color Google map integration in there. The air vents are kind of interesting. They do have like a cover. So we have carbon fiber trim on this S8, which is actually the standard trim. You can opt for gloss black instead. I don't know if I'd do that. It's $500 for gloss black. I guess I would just keep the carbon fiber. So there's a little thing that folds down here when I shut off the car and turn off the AC. So let me go ahead and open it up. You'll see it's gonna fold down like so. Not really important, but kind of cool, I suppose. The one thing I don't love is we have a carbon fiber shifter. I much preferred the uh, this material, this kind of perforated leather that was on the SQ8. So I'm not sure why they went for a carbon fiber one. It just doesn't feel great and it feels like it's going to get beat up very quickly. Uh, so that's just my opinion. Also on these air vents, we have a digital little thing right here. You can actually hear it clicking. Um, so that's how you control like the fan. You don't have like one of those physical knobs. It doesn't really need to be there. I guess it's just, you know, tech for the sake of tech there. We've got two sunroofs. So we have one up here and then one for the back as well. I'll show you that when we go ahead and get into the back. We do have some S seats here. We've got Audi's really nice diamond quilting with the little S logo embossed right here. These are heating, ventilating, and massage seats, which are quite nice. I also really enjoy these armrests. You can lift them up so that you can rest a little bit easier. And they have this gorgeous hinge back here that's actually made out of like real metal. Uh, so I think that is really nice as well. But that's pretty much all I really need to say about the interior. It just feels a little bit to me like a normal Audi. Let me know what you think in the comments. So I think the real reason you'd buy an A8 or an S8 over something like an RS7 or an RS6 or an A6 or what have you is the back seat. Because this is a long wheelbase, you have a massive back seat back here. However, I don't think it's the most special back seat that you can get in the in the segment. So Oh my goodness, look at the legroom that I have here. It's absolutely incredible. I have 44.3 inches of legroom here. That is more than the BMW 7 Series. I've double checked this and more than the Mercedes Benz S Class. I honestly thought that the new 7 Series had one of the best back seats I've ever tested, but wow, I can really just slide down and be super comfortable here. This is an insane amount of legroom. That being said, the middle seat here is still not very comfortable. So that is rather funny. And in terms of amenities, we don't have much. This is actually a kind of low optioned car that I have here. We have our nice little vanity mirrors. So that's quite nice if I wanna do my makeup or my hair back here. And if I fold down this center armrest, I have my heated seat controls and my temperature controls and I can control the fan speed. And that's about it. We've got storage and nothing else. There are some packages that you can get. So there's a rear comfort package. It's uh, 
$4,200. It's going to add heated armrests. You get matrix LED head uh, lighting up here for the reading lights and you get power seats that you can adjust using like a remote and those get heating, ventilation and massage. But $4,200, we don't have that option. You can also get a four passenger version. It's going to add a fixed center console here so you don't get a middle seat. $5,900, but that's going to add folding tables so that you can get some work done on like a laptop back here. You're going to get an airbag between the seats as well. If you're already spending over a hundred grand on this car, why not spend six grand more to make it a super executive backseat with like airplane style tray tables? That's just my opinion. If you're getting this car, you might as well make it the best luxury limousine you can, but just as it sits right now, it's kind of basic back here. All right, so let's get the 2023 Audi S8 out on the road. And before we talk specifically about this car, I just want to mention that Audi has greatly simplified the A8 lineup as of last year, and it carries over into the 2023 model year. So you can only get this car in like two flavors. You can get the base A8, which is a long wheelbase. They no longer make a short wheelbase model. That gets you a three liter turbocharged V6 engine if you're interested in all of this luxury without the speed and performance. If you don't need the speed and performance, the A8 produces 335 horsepower, 396 pound-feet of torque, does zero to 60 in 5.6 seconds, and it'll go about 130 miles an hour, top speed, but you'll get much better gas mileage. You'll get 19 MPG in the city, 28 on the highway, and 22 combined. Those are actually pretty good for a big sedan like this. But if you're watching this video, you're probably more interested in hearing about the S8, which trades in that V6 for a four liter Audi corporate twin turbo V8 with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. The V6 also has a 48 volt mild hybrid system, but the S8 dials the power way up. We've got 563 horsepower. We've got 590 pound feet of torque. That is the most in the class right now. That's more than a Mercedes S580. That is more than a BMW M760i. Jeez, I hope I got that right because BMW changes their names all the time. So it is a lot of power and you do get a lot of performance with that. So let me go ahead and put it into dynamic mode and then we can do a launch control here. Um, so zero to 60 in this car is going to take just 3.8 seconds. So the A8 is 5.6, this is 3.8 seconds, and it'll do 155 mile an hour limited top speed. So you do get a lot more performance here. So Audi makes its launch control extremely easy to use. Just put your foot on the brake, mash the throttle, and you should go. So let's do it. Ready? Ooh. Boy, oh boy, that kick, that completely undramatic, so smooth, easiest launch I've ever done. <laughs> and then, oh man, it really handles the corners pretty well, actually. Oh my goodness. Because this car has a $6,000 option that I mentioned to you earlier, the predictive air suspension. So every S8 is going to come with air suspension as standard, but, on the S8, you can opt for this predictive air suspension, $6,000, but you can only get it on the S8, so you're gonna miss out on this feature if you only get the A8, and when I tell you that this is magic suspension, this is one of the best suspension systems I have ever, ever sampled in my entire life, it completely er eliminates body roll, it helps the car corner so flat and so level when you're going around tight bends. But then when you're going over bumps, it's, it's magic. It's like a marshmallow. It's like a Rolls Royce level comfort. So we're going over some rough stuff. So let me go ahead and put it back into Comfort Plus. And the thing that this suspension will do, I already showed you, it has the ability that when you open the door, it goes and it raises the whole car. But it can do a whole lot more than that. When it detects a bump, it can read ahead on the road. So let's just say it sees a deep pothole. It can lift up the suspension to give you more cushion. So it'll kind of pre-prepare for that bump. So I'm going over this incredibly torn up road and it just floats over it. It just lifts up and it just kind of rides over it like it was nothing. It's incredible. I think the only suspension that I've driven 
that's somewhat comparable in terms of how it reads the road is the Mercedes E-Active body control, which is only available, I think on the S-Class and maybe the GLS Maybach. So not a lot of Mercedes still have that as an available option. But yeah, this Audi suspension is definitely right up there in terms of complexity, but it adds another bonus, which is safety. So in the event that you're sitting at an intersection and you're about to get T-boned, or, or driving through an intersection about to get T-boned, what the car can do is it can automatically lift up. So then you're getting hit at the stronger uh, structural portion of the car. So not only is this suspension incredible for the driving aspects of this car, for the fast, fun aspects, but it's good for safety as well. And then Audi says, while you're being chauffeured in this car, if you have somebody in the back seat and you kind of take an off ramp or a corner like I'm going around too, the suspension can actually eliminate uh, in-car sickness. So your passenger back there is not gonna get motion sickness from the car, just from a basic highway lane change or anything like that. And just from up in the front seat, I haven't been chauffeured in the back of this car, but just from the front seat, I can tell you that this predictive air suspension is incredible. It can lift the car five inches in that accident situation, two inches just on the uh, opening and closing. And it really just elevates the car in such an amazing way. I can't imagine that if I was spending over $100,000 on this car that I wouldn't be willing to spend six grand more on that function. I definitely think it is worth every penny. Uh, so what else can I tell you about the car? The S8 has some engineering work from Quattro GmbH. That's the uh, subdivision of Audi that does the RS cars. So this car may be only an S model, but oh man, especially with that suspension, this might be one of, this might be my favorite Audi as an overall product. The RS3 is great and obviously the RS is great, but the amount of comfort that this has while giving me the fun here, the, the, the steering wheel is not particularly talkative back to me, but it's very direct. It's a little heavier, at least in dynamic mode. It does have dynamic steering as well that'll tense up as you're going through corners like I was just doing. And it, it's very good. It definitely doesn't communicate back to me in terms of feedback, but it is very direct and it's not as light as other Audis I've driven. This is not an RS model, but I think I like this more than something like an RS7. Uh, the RS6 is different because it's a wagon. I absolutely love the RS6, uh, but oh man. And then it has rear wheel steer so you can just get away super quick. Oh, no wonder why Jason Statham used an A8 in Transporter 2. Oh, it's so fast. And then it just quiets down and becomes so comfortable. I absolutely love driving the S8. I've always loved S8s and this one is no different. If you're looking for a big, powerful, fast cruiser, this is definitely something that could be on your shopping list based on how it drives. But as I mentioned before, the interior maybe just doesn't feel as special as the BMW 7 Series or the Mercedes S-Class. And I should also mention, <laughs> there's a reason why I talked to you about the A8 at the beginning of this. Uh, 28 MPG on the highway, you're not gonna get that here. You're only gonna get 14 in the city, 23 on the highway, and 17 combined. So again, if you like what you saw here, and you just don't care that much about the performance, the A8 could also be a good option. All right, so that was the 2023 Audi S8. I wanna mention if you're interested in the A8 where you can get a lot of the same features here but without as much performance, that car is gonna start at 87,800. That's actually a really good price in this segment. That is much less than the base BMW 7 Series, much less than the base Mercedes S-Class. It's even cheaper than the Genesis G90, which is supposed to be kind of the value in the segment. So good on Audi for offering such a low priced, low, low priced, it's still 87 grand, a8. Now the S8 is a significant jump up. You get a lot more power. You do also get a lot more standard equipment. It's 120,500. So that is 
kind of a lot actually. So the BMW 7 Series with its V8 engine is actually cheaper. And I have spec'd them out kind of exactly the same. I fully loaded them. So if you load up an Audi S8, you're gonna be at about $152,000. You can get a BMW 7 Series with the reclining seat in the back, with the 31 inch amazing 8K screen. You can't get any screens in the back of the S8. That car is going to be less expensive. The Mercedes S580, which is not as powerful, Remember, both of those cars are not as powerful. An S580 can be more expensive than this when fully loaded. So the S8 kind of hits the middle ground there. I really do think that the S-Class and the 7 Series feel more spectacular on the inside in terms of the lighting and the materials and just the infotainment screens, all of that kind of stuff. But the S8 is possibly the best looking of them. It is, I think, the best driving out of those three that I've driven. So there's definitely still a reason why you might wanna choose the Audi and live out your Jason Statham Transporter dreams. Honestly, I loved Transporter 2 when that movie came out when I was younger and driving this car, it's hard not to feel like a baddie. I absolutely adore Adore it. Not sure if it's the one I would choose. Let me know in the comments which of those three cars you would pick. The Mercedes S-Class, the BMW 7 Series, or this 8. I really hope you've enjoyed. And as always, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. I'll see you next time.